In today's session of parallel programming, we'll be dealing with the topic grid level cooperative groups and multi process surveys. Grid level cooperative groups. Uh, the basic need of this uh, grid level cooperative groups is when we go for traditional CUDA programming, as you can see, uh, this is a problem where we were doing two iterations. So this was the original problem where you were uh, dividing it into blocks and uh, the block was containing individual threads. So this is one block, the other block. And uh, once you perform the operations on the individual block, you have some intermediate results and these intermediate results. So these operations are done by your GPU, right? And after that, the intermediate results are to be sent to the CPU. So CPU will cross check the intermediate results and then forward it to the second iterations. So this was a normal uh, procedure which was employed in your traditional programming approach where uh, multiple kernel launches are required. So here I require four kernel launches and again for the intermediate results one more time I need to call a function. So if I have three iterations I need to call the function thrice. So to overcome that particular problem we go for grid level cooperative groups where in grid level cooperative groups the intermediate results need not be passed on to your CPU. Using a single kernel function, you can perform all the operations. So this is one of one major need why we go for grid level cooperative groups. The other one is when we were talking about grid, what is a grid? Grid is a collection of blocks, right? And block internal will have a thread. So when we were going for synchronization, synchronization was done to a particular block. So when I say the block is synchronized, all the threads within the block are synchronized. So when I have multiple blocks, block one, block two, block three and block four, when I synchronize only the threads of block one are synchronized. The synchronization method I need to apply individually to each of the blocks so that all the threads in other blocks are being synchronized. To overcome this particular problem also we go for grid level cooperative groups where by using this particular function grid.sync irrespective of the threads whether it is present in block 1, block 2, block 3 or block 4 all the blocks present in the grid would be synchronized. So you need not individually synchronize individual blocks. You need to only go for synchronizing the grid and all the blocks within the grid will be synchronized and all the threads within the block will be synchronized. So this was the other major purpose why we are going for grid level cooperative groups. To actually enter into the programming part, if you want to write a program for this cooperative groups, uh, as you all know for cooperative groups, this is a rename which I am using. So this is the other name provided to your cooperative groups and we are calling a kernel function here. So when you see the kernel function here, we are creating a, a grid group. So the name of the group is here is grid and this dot grid will create a group of threads. So all the blocks will be grouped together. All the threads within the block will be grouped together and all the blocks will also be grouped in a grid and you can perform any operation on this particular grid. And when you want uh, some synchronization between the threads of the blocks, we go for grid dot sync perform some computations and again you go for grid.sync. So ultimately when I'm using a function grid.sync, all the blocks pertaining to a particular grid are being synchronized. And this is, this is pertaining to your uh, main method where you are declaring the block size, grid size and the data size which are being used for uh, calling your function. And you all know this is your device data and CUDA malloc function is allocating your device data based on your data size. So data size is nothing but your block size into grid size where the block size is 256 and grid size is 4. Depending on that the amount of memory is allocated to your device data. Now you want to go for calling your function. So grid level kernel. This is a kernel function which we have already seen uh, based on the grid size. So 4 grids means four blocks and block size here is 256 where you have 256 threads in each of the block and you are passing the two variables one is your device data d underscore data the other is your data size and you can perform any operation where I mean ultimately this will be called to your kernel function you can perform your operations and once the kernel operations are being done you can go for using CUDA device synchronize which will make 
the host to wait till this GPU has performed the operation. And finally, once the operations are being done, you can release the memory which is being allocated to your device data. So CUDA free would release the memory. Since the allocation is done by the user, it is a responsibility of the user to release the memory itself. The next topic we uh, will be seeing in this today's class is about multi-process service. So when you go for multi-process service, uh, as, as far as now we have seen that CPU will be delegating the work to your GPU and the GPU performs your operations. Now take a case where you have multiple CPUs which are assigning the work to a single GPU. So in that case, if the GPU wants to work uh, complete the work given by all the CPUs here, it has to go for using a time slicing operation. So when you go for your time slicing operation, assume uh, three minutes is given to CPU one, three minutes are assigned to CPU two, three minutes are allocated to CPU three. Now, after three minutes, CPU one, even though it has not completed it works, the control will be automatically given to your uh, CPU two and the CPU two will be working on the GPU for three more minutes. And finally, CPU 3 will be given a chance to work on the GPU at last, right? Now, assume if CPU 3 requires only one minute for performing an operation, it is simply waiting for six minutes to get its turn. So this may lead to uh, where you go for making a process of long waiting, right? Starvation. In other terms of your uh, operating system, we call it as starvation because for one minute of its work to be done, it is waiting for six minutes to be allocated to the GPU. To overcome that particular problem, we go for using multi-process service. So your GPU can be even made to work in MPS mode. MPS stands for multi-process service mode where the GPU can take the operations or it can perform the process simultaneously from each of the CPU. If I go for designating this as CPU 1 and this as CPU 2, it can take the operations from CPU 1 and it can even take the operations from CPU 2 and perform them parallelly. So the execution here would be done parallelly. Whereas in the previous case, what we have seen, this was a time slicing operation where GPU was allocating the time to each, each of the CPU for some amount of time. And later on, it was working in a round robin fashion where the first CPU would be again given a chance to performing its operation. Where in this uh, method of MPS mode, it is not the case. Irrespective of the number of CPUs, the GPU will be parallelly executing all the operations pertaining to each of the CPU. So this is about your multi-process service. And if you want to make this multi-process service work in terms of the programming, we go for using MPI, multi-programming uh, multi interface. So when you go for this interface here, we have already seen we, you can start this uh, programming interface by MPI in it where you have your argument counter and the argument vector and this interface you can go for designating the rank each process which are involved in the communication. This we will be calling it as a communication world, right? If you can remember in the communication world, you have n number of process that are involved for the communication and each process would be designated with an ID and that ID we call it as a rank. So you can find out the rank of each and every process by using MPI communication rank. And similarly, you can even know the number of process that are involved in this communication. So this MPI interface is generally used to make your CPU, multiple CPUs work in collaboration with a single GPU. This is all about your multi-process service.